Welcome to Simply Learn's Deep Learning Frameworks. My name is Richard Kirshner with the Simply Learn team. That's www.simplylearn.com. Get certified. Get ahead. Let's cover some of the big players in deep learning today. And deep learning is just so exciting. This is the forefront of our machine learning and artificial intelligence and where it's at as far as the cutting edge and what's coming next. That doesn't mean ignore all the machine learning tools because certainly they've been around a long time and are a basis for a lot of deep learning platforms along with uh, solving the more basic problems. But deep learning is the cutting edge. It is the one that's finding new solutions to things we never thought were solvable before. And today we're going to look at uh, just a quick look at TensorFlow, probably the biggest package out there right now, Keras, which is probably one of the biggest growing packages out there right now, PyTorch, Theano, DL4J, Cafe, Chainer, and the CNTK. Now all of these packages center on deep learning and neural networks. If you haven't studied our neural networks and how they function, send a note down below in the YouTube video and we'll post some more information or one of our other videos, just so you have an idea what deep learning is. But let's go ahead and dive in. Let's take a look at TensorFlow. And as we look at these things, I want you also to notice that a lot of this overlaps. You'll see companies are investing in all of these different products uh, to see where they go. So these are all huge players, no matter where you're coming from. So let's look at TensorFlow. TensorFlow was developed by Google Brain Team. It supports languages both Python and R. That's a big. You'll see Python is probably one of the biggest players in the data science neural networks across all the packages. That doesn't discount any of the other ones. And certainly a lot of these packages like TensorFlow you can set up an interface into Java and other places. But it was designed and has a very high functionality in both Python and R. And it uses Dataflow graphs to process data. This is nice because as you build these neural networks you can actually look at how the data flows through the neural network. They're easy to build machine learning models, robust machine learning production, powerful experimentation for research. I can't even emphasize that enough. It's very easy to go in there and switch a couple of lines in your TensorFlow setup to try out a new setup, a new neural network to see how it works with your data going through and if it gives you better results. TensorBoard for data visualization. And this is another huge package that uh, people kind of forget as part of TensorFlow put out by Google Brain Team. Uh, and TensorFlow is now open source. The TensorFlow data visualization is, makes it so quick and easy to put out your data for visual effects uh, when you're working with your CEO or uh, with your shareholders. And of course you can use both the R and Python uh, visualization packages too since you're usually running it in Python or R. Let's go ahead and talk about Keras. We mentioned overlapping earlier. Keras is probably the most overlapping package out there and I'll show you why in just a minute. Let's start with the creator of Keras or the founder. Now Keras was originally developed by Francois Chole. Um, he's the author of Keras and it has over 350,000 users and 700 plus open source contributors. That's big. Uh, Keras is um, TensorFlow might be the biggest or well most well-known package out there. Keras because because it overlaps so many other areas and is such a high-ended development, it is probably the fastest growing package out there right now. And it's got a high-level neural network API written in Python. Uh, so for all our, us Python lovers and data science, a great package to go from there. What uh, makes it interesting is that it runs on top of TensorFlow, uh, Theano, CNTK. So it uses their neural networks underneath. And then you use your definition in Keras to define all these packages. So now if you're running TensorFlow and you put Keras on top of it, you have both the uh, benefits of Keras and all the tools in TensorFlow. This is why Keras is the fastest growing neural network or deep learning package out there. And it's used in several startup research labs and companies. Uh, Microsoft Research, you'll see Microsoft is invested in all of these now. So any place you have any of these coming out, Microsoft is part of it. And of course Microsoft uh, with the CNTK is their package and they're highly invested in that. Netflix, NASA, CERN are all using Keras for using their data processing and their deep learning. It's user friendly as it offers simple Simple APIs and provides clear and actionable feedback upon user error. Provides modularity as a sequence of a graph of standalone, fully configurable modules that can be plugged together with as few restrictions as possible. These two things makes it so easy to write a cross code. A lot of times you might be messing with TensorFlow and you turn around and you can do the same cross code in, in a few lines or le you know significantly less than you'd write the same code in TensorFlow. So you could use cross on top of TensorFlow. In cross, it's easily extensible as a new modules are simple to add. This feature makes Keras suitable
suitable for advanced research. So from uh, Karas, we're going to go into PyTorch, and it's authored by Adam Pasquet, Sam Gross, Sumith Kantala, and Gregory Channon. Lua based scientific computing framework for machine learning and deep learning algorithms. So this is coming from the scientific teams. They took and they can guess it's uh, Pi, so it's in Python, but it's based on the scientific computing and so they're looking at answers for science. Uh, and it employed CUDA along with C, C++ libraries for processing. It was designed to scale the product of building models and overall flexibility. If you're a C, C++ um, uh, programmer and that's your programmer programming of choice, you can see why PyTorch might might be really a um, big jump for you because you know the back end and you can get in there and see what's going on with that uh, particular framework. And it's widely used in companies like Facebook, Twitter, Google. Um, and you find this interesting because Google, like I said, you'll see uh, Microsoft and Google has their hands in all of these. And I'm guessing that Facebook and Twitter have probably investigated the best use um, and use these different frameworks depending on what they're working on. So it provides a flexibility and speed due to its hybrid front end. Enable scalable distributed training and performance optimization in research and production using torch.distributed backend. Deep integration into Python allows popular libraries and packages to be used for clear writing neural network layers in Python. So remember it's got that dual layer. Uh, so if you're running in C plus or C, great language and you can skip over to Python. Then there's Theano. And I had to look this up how to pronounce it even though I've played with it. Um, I've only read the word. I've never heard someone say it. And I finally went in there and looked it up. It is Theano. There's a lot of pronunciations, Theano, and different things. Uh, so Theano uh, is developed by the University de Montreal. And it's written in Python. And it really centers on NVIDIA. And, uh, so you have your integration there to your GPSs, which is huge. And you'll see the GPS uh, modules, like in TensorFlow. There's a GPS module in there. And in Keras, obviously, since it sits on TensorFlow. Most of these, that's where they're going, is the GPS can process so much faster than a CPU. Uh, so the Python library that allows to define, optimize, and evaluate mathematical expressions involving multi-dimensional arrays efficiently. So when we look at this, we have NumPy. Theano has a tight integration with NumPy for data computations. So if you're a major Python lover and you love the NumPy, which is a, you know the number Python, such a central aspect of Python and data science, uh, NumPy is the way to go. And then he uses the GPUs to perform data-intensive computations, which are much faster than on a CPU. And it has extensive unit testing and self-verification that can detect and diagnose many types of errors. So Theano is a pretty solid package, um, and the fact it's written in Python and it's designed pretty solid on the GPU makes it a very uh, big contender in our deep learning array of uh, uh, platforms out there. And then we have deep learning for Java, or the DL for they usually call it DL for J. Deep learning for Java. It was developed by a machine learning group led by Adam Gibson. A uh, wonderful group. I got to meet them. They're, they're a lot of fun. It's written in Java and Scala, and that is big. If you are working in big data and the Hadoop and the Spark framework, those should jump out at you right off the bat. Uh, so we have our DL4J supports different neural networks like uh, CNN, RNN, and LSTM. CNN is your convolutional neural network. RNN is your um, recurrent neural network. And LSTM is your long short-term memory for the neural network. So you'll see CNN, LSTM, a convolutional neural network with a long short-term memory. It's um, connected to the Eclipse Foundation. So the DL4J was contributed to Eclipse Foundation, integrated with Hadoop and Apache Spark. I talked about that earlier since Scala, um, Spark is written in Scala. So when we're talking about big data and big data processing, that's a big name to have on there. And the fact that a lot of uh, Hadoop, your MapReduce, is based in Java, you can see the connection for the um, DL4J and big data. And so DL4J brings AI to business environments for use to distributed CPUs and GPUs. And uh, right there, distributed CPUs and GPUs. So this can be run across a huge cluster of computers quite easily. It's designed for that. So if you're working in Spark and you have 100 computers set up on different racks, this would be a really solid roll it out the um, doorway setup for you. So we provide a distributed computing framework as training with DL4J occurs in a cluster. That's what we're talking about, cluster computations. Includes an n-dimensional array class using ND4J that allows scientific computing in Java and Scala. Offers a vector space modeling and topic modeling toolkit that is designed to handle large text sets and perform NLP P, natural language processing. So we looked at DL4J. Let's take a look at the uh, cafe developed at Bear. That's uh, Berkeley 
Berkeley Artificial Intelligence Research. So Berkeley's at it again. CAFE stands for Convolutional Architecture for Fast Feature Embedding. It's written in C++ with a Python interface. So again, we have another contender for people who work in the C++ realm and want to be able to go back and forth between that and Python. Generally used for image detection and classification. Used in academic research projects, which makes sense. This is coming out of Berkeley. Startup prototypes and large-scale industrial applications in vision, speech, and multimedia. And really, when you see vision, speech, and multimedia, all of these deep learning are addressing these particular aspects and more. Uh, so it's not a big jump. When you talk about vision, there is a little bit there as far as which ones handle the vision better, because then you're doing uh, different matrices. You know, you have a XY plot coming in, and that's a big deal. That's You'll see that in TensorFlow, especially. CAFE supports GPU and CPU-based acceleration computational kernel libraries such as NVIDIA, CUDNN, and Intel MLK. Uh, so it's integrated a little bit more on the multiprocessor and the GPU setups in there. We're seeing that all come together. Most of the packages now, well, NVIDIA is almost in all of these as far as the GPU acceleration, but we're starting to see the other ones migrate in there. It offers a high-speed CAN process over 60 million images per day with a single NVIDIA K40 GPU. That's huge. 60 million images per day. Uh, so when you're training this thing and it's, you spend a lot of time training and I mean that's just huge. That's amazing. So let's take a look at Chainer. Uh, Chainer is one of those that kind of um, I don't hear a lot about uh, but it's still a contender in our setup in here. It is developed by Preferred Networks in collaboration with IBM, Intel, Microsoft, and NVIDIA. And there we see NVIDIA again. They've got their hands in everything, and so does Intel, Microsoft, and IBM. That's what puts this at one of the top contenders, is it has such a huge backing in the industrial world. It's written purely in Python. It runs on top of NumPy and CUPy Python libraries. So that's straightforward. If you're, uh, like I said, most of the stuff in our machine learning is heading towards the Python environment because it's so flexible. It's currently one of the top used setups in there. And the chainer is written right on top of it in Python. And it provides a number of extended libraries. Uh, we have the chainer MN and the chainer RL and the chainer CV. And you'll find in deep learning these little abbreviations are so many, unless you're working with a specific setup and you're running it, I wouldn't worry too much about memorizing all of them. You maybe get your flashcards out. Uh, but we have Chainer MN, which is multiple uh, nodes, RL, which is your reinforced learning, and CV, which is your computer vision library. Uh, so your images. And so when you're working with, with Chainer, you definitely want to know what those mean and as you dig in deeper into it. Uh, but these are, they have tons of extended libraries. These are a few of the libraries they have. Uh, these are the top ones that are used. So it supports CUDA computation. It only requires a few lines of code to leverage a GPU. There's our GPU, which we're seeing across the board on all of our different neural networks and how they, how they um, apply that is important because some of them do a better job than others. It also runs on multiple GPUs with little effort. So just by its name, Chainer is designed to send it out there to the different aspects and bring them back together. That's what makes this one of the reasons Chainer is being developed. So it provides various network architectures, including feed forward nets, convi nets, recurrent nets, and recursive nets. Uh, and again, now we're starting to dig in deep into um, the neural networks and deep learning as opposed to the different main players. And most of these cover different aspects of these, so you have to really dig deep to see where these go. But Chainer's coming up, and it's got some heavy hitters backing it. Um, it has, uh, you know, like I said, IBM, Intel, Microsoft, and NVIDIA are part of the development team there. And uh, we're getting down to the end here. We have our Microsoft CNTK, developed by Microsoft Research. And the CNTK is a deep learning framework that builds a neural network as a series of computational steps via directed graph. It supports interfaces such as Python and C++. So again, now we have um, one of the nice things about this is you'll see it's it's the interfaces are really spread out. So those are the two main players with Python being the more commonly used one. But we're starting to see C++ coming in because there's a lot of programmers out there who use C++. And it's used mainly for um, our handwritten. And you can see some examples here for what it's used mainly for. So it's designed for speed and efficiency. And that's always, that's a big thing because neural networks just eat up so much processing power for all the calculations it takes to um, program them. So it's designed for speed and efficiency. CNTK scales well in production using GPUs but has limited support from the community. So again, we have the big hitters behind it, Microsoft Research, but does not have a huge community support yet. It's supposed both RNN and CNN type of neural models capable of handling image, 
A nice picture of the guy writing there. Handwriting and speech recognition problems. So that's a wrap. We covered a number of different models here. We dived a little bit into TensorFlow, probably the biggest hitter out there right now, or the biggest name out on the market. We have Keras, probably the biggest growing name out there since it's able to leverage um, both TensorFlow and Theano and CNTK. So it leverages other different products underneath of it. We have the PyTorch, the Theano, the DL4J, the Cafe, the Chainer, and the CNTK. Uh, so this is exciting because all of these packages, people are jumping back and forth between them because one has the new tools out that works on something and then somebody else upgrades theirs so it works better. You know, so uh, up comes DL4J which processes across huge pools of data across huge Hadoop networks and has that Java interface and it's like, oh, okay, wow, that you can leverage 100 computers to train your neural network across all this data because the training is what takes up all the resources. And TensorFlow comes... Well, how do we set that up? The community under TensorFlow then builds their packages to run their GPUs across multiple data. And you can see that these are just growing with each other and kind of in their own direction all at the same time. So very exciting. Very exciting cutting edge in our artificial intelligence design and machine learning. So with that, thank you for joining us today. Again, it's Simply Learn, www.simplylearn.com. Get certified, get ahead. Feel free to join us at our website if you have additional questions or want more resources. We certainly have a whole library of videos and resources we've put out over the years, or you can post notes in the YouTube video below. We do have a monitor that tracks those. Thank you for joining us again today, and happy learning. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.